Welcome back to the Econet Evaporator Controller Setup Series. Today we will discuss how to connect uh, a command center display. Why a command center? Uh, again, you have, uh, we have our communication uh, terminal uh, for Econet, and then we have our 16 volt DC power supply uh, to power the command center. To wire a command center to uh, multiple controllers. So you have your Econet communication terminal right here, and then you have your 16 volt DC power supply for the command center. So for the first thing you need to do is, of course, you need to address each of the controls that are going to be connected to it. Uh, so again, let's just navigate here to settings, equipment. So there's two different addresses. If the controls are going to be part of a group in that DAISY chain, then you use your group member configuration. So if it's group one leader or follower or whichever the case may be. Uh, so you address it with this setting. If the controls are going to be a standalone unit, not part of a group, then you scroll down to network instance. In this case, let's, let's, we'll let this one be network instance number one. Uh, and the, the, one, the one next will be network instance number two in, in our example. So already got our connectors with the wires terminated. So of course we got communication terminal, uh, white for E1, black for E2, and green for RT. And that's, this is going to be basically how we would daisy chain multiple controllers the same way as we do in a group. Uh, the only addition is now we have the two wires for E1, E2 that are going out to the command center itself. Uh, and then also for the command center, we got our other pair of wires that are for the, uh, for the power supply to power the display, the command center display itself. So we plug this in here for communication, and then we plug power. So once we got our, uh, all our controllers connected to the command center, uh, in our example, uh, we have two, uh, unit one and unit two. So this is what the command center screen looks like. Of course, this is a home screen. We are looking at unit one. And then, of course, since we have multiple, uh, more than one unit connected, we have our word units down here, and that's for basic navigation. So that's when we see unit one and unit two. So if we, do, we, just, we, if we just want to navigate to unit two, we just tap on that one. It'll take us to the home screen of unit two. And so in our example here, of course, the temperature in the middle, that's your space temperature. Uh, it'll show the unit status, which is right now the refrigeration, which means cooling, cooling is active. And also uh, down at the bottom on, on the blue is your current set point for that, for that particular unit. Basic navigation uh, for the command center. Of course, the home screen, uh, we're showing current temperature and the temperature set point. Okay. And then the, uh, the actual unit or uh, equipment that, that it is actually looking at. And then when there's more than one controller connected, you're gonna see this units uh, at the, at the bottom right, you tap on that, and that's basically your navigation. So you can then navigate to, to a different unit uh, or group that's connected on the communication bar. Right there where unit two is showing its space temp and its current set point. It shows refrigeration, which means, means it's actively cooling the space. Uh, and that's basically for, nav again, navigation between one, you know, more than one unit. Again, basic home screen. Uh, Plus or minus set point. Again, just make sure you're you're looking at the correct unit uh, or group in the communication bus to change the set point. Navigation screen to navigate to a different unit uh, that the command center is connected to. Then on the lower left, we got our uh, options menu. So. Notice that this is basically a carryover of the display on the board itself. You have settings, status, and service. Uh, on the settings, you have basic settings, then you have also a time clock setting, and then you have installer settings. So under basic settings, this will take you to the settings on the command center itself. Uh, we have an alarm beep enable. Uh, the command center makes an audible noise whenever a controller has an, an active alarm. Uh, you can do like a, a lock the screen, and that's basically sort of an optional locking of the screen. Uh, you see a little padlock, so that's what that way. If you lock it, nobody can adjust set points uh, while it's locked, and then you just go back in there again to unlock it. Uh, temperature display. You can show temperatures in Celsius, but this is so it'll only be at the command center. So at the command center only, you should change it to Celsius, uh, and then you'll see your current temperature and set point in Celsius. The controller itself will still show in Fahrenheit, but the command center can do the conversion to Celsius. 
So again, we go back, changing back to Fahrenheit. And then proximity sensing, that's this little motion sensor. Uh, if we let the command center uh, without, you know, any, any, after any period of inactivity, after a few minutes, the screen will dim and it will show the current space temp uh, on the center of the screen. And then as you get closer and it picks up motion, the screen, screen will light, light up again to show you the complete uh, home screen. So those are the basic settings for the, uh, for the command center. Then we have the time clock settings, uh, which is it's basically the same time clock setting that's adjustable at the controller itself. And this is important for the uh, alarm history timestamp. Uh, the advantage of having a command center, though, is you adjust it here once, and it broadcasts the time setting to every controller that's connected, instead of you having to go to each individual controller and adjust the time setting at each control board. Uh, this is a lot more uh, efficient as far as time. So uh, again, you know, if we set the time, yeah. 2022, daylight savings, yes, and we hit accept. And so now every control board that's connected to the command center, basically these two, uh, they're gonna have the exact same time setting. Uh, and that's, again, that's important for the alarm history uh, on each of the controllers. Um, In addition to that, again, on the, still on the settings, we have installer settings, and this is where we get to the uh, settings of the equipment itself, like refrigerant selection, uh, how much runtime between defrost, uh, is it a cooler or a freezer, etc. So to access those, you actually have to hold that for five seconds to get into the installer settings screen. It'll take you here. Uh, so notice you're gonna have the settings listed, the current unit, or group that you're looking at. So this is important again. Uh, these are the settings for that particular unit. If we want to change the settings from a different unit, we just have to navigate over to the next one and then wait for the screen to load. So now we're looking at the settings for that second unit. And then we just go back to unit one uh, just to uh, make a few changes here. So of course we have system enabled, uh, runtime onto defrost, the max defrost runtime, superheat set point, and then notice the big arrows on the left and right. So the right arrow, uh, it'll take you to the next page. So we have our compressor runtime alert, hysteresis, cooler freezer, refrigerant selection. And again, this is actually to make a change, for example, if I want to adjust the refrigerant from here, uh, all I just do is press on the arrows. Uh, and then the setting just basically goes, it, it takes a couple seconds, but once, once it settles there, it'll send the change over to the controller. And again, when we go to the other pages, uh, we have protocol type, uh, single or dual, if it's a center mount unit, uh, drain and, and ox temp sensors, uh, stepper valve type, which of course this one, since we only support Sporland valve, uh, SCR valve, that setting should never be changed on these units. Uh, we got our defrost termination temp, our pulse override, uh, pump down delay, defrost type. Uh, so, for example, if I wanna, uh, if I want to adjust my defrost termination temp again, I can, I can just go to the arrows, and adjust it up or down. And for more information, you want also access the uh, installation manual for what each of these settings uh, does and. Uh, also lower and upper limits on each of these settings. And so custom naming of uh, multiple units. So uh, the more units or groups you have connected to the command center, it might get confusing as to which freezer or which cooler uh, we are looking at. So to help with that, uh, you can actually do a custom naming on each one. So just Hold the name uh, of, that, of the unit or group at the top, hold it for five seconds. It'll take you to this like, little keyboard there uh, where you can actually give it a custom name. We hit save. So now cooler shows up right under unit one so you know uh, what you can name it as. Uh, so you can rename it to say uh, beer cooler or uh, meat freezer or whatever product, uh, you know, just, uh, just a general description. You can have a maximum of 18 characters. Uh, and so you can give it any any name any name uh, that, that that you want. So 
Same thing, we can rename uh, unit two. So unit two is defrosting, but we can still rename it. And so now you have a custom name there for that particular uh, system. And again, we navigate back to unit one. A group, uh, it looks just like a standalone unit, except you're gonna see at the top there, group one, group two, group three, or group four. Uh, under settings, you still access that menu the same way as before for each individual group member. So again, we got group leader with all the settings for the group leader. Then when we go to the follower, one thing to notice on the follower is some settings will be uh, blank, meaning these individual settings are not set at the follower because they, they're actually uh, being broadcast by the leader. So on a follower only, they'll be grayed out, so you won't be able to adjust them here. So as we go to the uh, uh, additional, you know, to the next page, it's same, again, for example, figuring type, that is, that is one of the settings that the leader basically sets the entire group for a specific refrigerant, so that's not shown here. Uh, these other settings can be adjusted individually to each follower, uh, like, you know, for example, uh, coil type, single or dual, uh, additional sensors that you may have, uh, defrost termination temp, pulse override. But then again, notice we are, we are also getting to other settings that are blank because, uh, again, they're not adjustable at the follower. They're adjustable at the leader only. So if we cycle back to the leader, then those settings will show up at the leader. Under service, same thing, uh, current alarms for the leader, for the follower, alarm history for the leader, alarm history for the follower, Support screen, that's same as before, just to record the contact information of the re local refrigeration technician. Equipment, that's still same as before. Uh, we're looking at software version for the dis uh, display and the actual controller. And then uh, on the test, again, if we're forcing a defrost, we force the defrost at the leader. If we cycle to the follower, It'll just tell us the, the status, is, is it defrosting or not? We cannot force a defrost at the follower. The defrost, we force it at the leader, so the leader can then get all the followers to start defrosting at the same time. And then on the network screen, again, same as before, uh, it's just to show you, we got two, two controllers connected and addressed as a leader and a follower for group one. So that's what is shown on the, on the network screen. This is what happens if there was an alarm on any controller connected to the command center. First is you're gonna see the little exclamation mark with the triangle, let you know there's an active alarm. And there's the audible beep, the audible buzzer to let you know. Uh, so that alarm, it, once you tap the screen, you mute the buzzer, but then we actually can go here and it'll take, take you to the specific controller that's alarming. In this case, the follower two for group one uh, has got a space time sensor disconnected. Uh, so once the alarm condition is resolved, the alarm goes away. So that is showing you an active alarm there. And then it, it also gets logged in the alarm history. At the top there, group one, group two, group three, or group four. You can do the same custom naming as before. Just hold the name down for five seconds and you can rename it as well. Same thing, we have current temperature and set point. The one displayed here is actually the average of all the group members. Uh, if you want to see the individual temperature, the specific space temperature from each individual controller, then you go to your status screen and then you can access. So we're looking at the leader, this is reading 32. Then we look at the follower, 32.3. So basically they're close enough to each other, but basically the on a group, on a group only, the temperature displayed here is actually the average, uh, but the, again, the set point change was just the same. Uh, set point change goes to the leader, the leader then broadcasts the, the set point change to the followers.